So for the Korean succulents, I chose to do a different um, soil mix. And what I used is the, I went to the aquarium or um, pet store and got some aquarium pebbles. I do have the the black ones and the the brown ones. I just like the color. And then I got some white sand, which is not really a white sand. It's a kind of a beige. And then I got some pumice. I still had pumice and I just mixed them all up. Uh, I think I did two parts pebbles, which is one part the black one and one part the uh, tan ones and then one part of the pumice so okay so two parts pebbles one part pumice and one part um, the white sand so I'll link that in the description so that you guys can um, order it from Amazon if you don't have um, a place to get it from and then I went I got the my regular cacti mix and and then I put one part of this to two parts of this but in the mix I also added oh mind you this whole box of uh, cacti mix I already shot up some um, my pesticide in there so anything that was there dead before is now I mean alive before is now dead so I, I'm just gonna keep doing that and then I have my my worm casting and I just added I don't know for this whole um, little pail right here I added about three scoops of uh, worm castings it's really it's not a big deal if the the um, ratio isn't right with the worm casting as long as you have worm casting in there in order to feed the plants so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to fill up three of my terracotta, terracotta pots and the reason why I wanted to use terracotta pot is to because is because <laughs> it's not too because uh, the reason why I use terracotta pots is because terracotta pots have um, a good drainage, drainage system and not only that um, the, the water the moisture seeps through the sides of it it's a porous uh, material so um, it's uh, make sure that my plants are not going to be overwatered. And I think if this poses to be a very successful, um, healthy plant mix, then I from now on will use this instead of just the straight cacti mix that I have um, in order to keep my plants really healthy. So I don't know where I'm going to get like wholesale. Of these pebbles but um, I'm pretty sure I can find it somewhere uh, maybe a feed store or something in Fairfield I'm not sure but anyway that's the story morning glory this is I'm gonna fill three because that's all I have for pots and I have big ones over there but I don't want to use big ones because then I have to fill it with you know this kind of soil I don't know I maybe maybe halfway I'm not sure because um, their succulents are shallow rooters so really not a big deal if the rest of the soil is you know not exactly the same as the one around it so be that as it may I am now going to fill and then I will show you what I'll do after I fill this up and how I'm going to I probably have to go to the to Home Depot and get or Walmart to get some more of the bigger pots like maybe this big I wish they had a wide mouth once I think they do um, because some of the echeverias that I got were kind of huge already so you know I don't want it I don't want to have it overgrown already after th you know maybe three months and then um, have to repot it again I want it to be there at least six months or more so that um, they get really healthy roots and really um, start getting growing um, healthy and strong 
Okay, so now that I have my little pots, uh, since it came from Walmart, I don't know, you know, not too uh, trusting of it. So I'm going to I'm going to squirt some alcohol just to make sure that anything. I mean, these are expensive. Echeveris, so I gotta make sure. I mean, the alcohol dries pretty quickly, so what the heck, right? Might as well be safe than sorry. And it's not gonna hurt the plants, obviously, because um, I mean, if they can take if they can take a spray for mealybugs directly, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. So okay. I just noticed that these pots have numbers in them and these ones are number one so it's the littlest one the little well actually no it's not the littlest one because this is the tiniest tiniest one these are like the two inch pots these are I don't know I think these are four inches yeah four inch pots so yeah so I have those and I have um, okay so this one don't have numbers to them so I would just say six inch pots so four inch and six inches because these um, plants are about that without having to compromise too much room or too little room for them I have those little mesh plastic mesh um, bottom pieces for to make sure that the the soil doesn't escape from it and it came from this one sheet right here from Daiso I, I bought that a long time ago and I have not seen them have any more of those so I had to get the round ones that I showed you from my Daiso haul so I had to settle for that because they didn't have the full sheets right here I still have some left over but um, not very much and I know I'm gonna run out soon so uh, yeah okay so here we are we have our pots full of the mixture the new mixture that I um, put together and I am right now about to start to plant my succulents. So this one right here already has some roots on it. Um, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. However, I'm going to squirt the wheel with some water just to make sure that the root gets a little bit of nourishment on its own. So, I don't even think these roots are going to be the, the roots that are going to attach to the, I need a little thing. It's, I don't even think this, these roots are going to be the, the ones that are going to be the ones that are going to be <laughs> I don't even think these roots are the ones that are going to be um, the one to hold on to the I, I don't know it you know we may see some roots pop up but I'm not going to touch any of these leaves because these leaves are still you can see that these leaves are still um, nourishing the plant so I just took just a little bit of water just to wet the whistle right there. And then I'm going to bury that and hopefully and hope for the best. Okay. Hope for the best. So this one is our Echeveria Helena. 
so because I already made a label for that labels here we go Elena and then I'm not going to I'm really trying to be you know handle these things with kids gloves because kids gloves <laughs> because they're very I don't know I I just feel like they're very sensitive because they came from all the way from um, overseas so and I was at Walmart today looking looking at their uh, they don't even they didn't even have any echeverias I don't think I don't know I have the film I have the film to show you but I think there was a couple of echeverias but wasn't really anything special you know so I'm going to spritz a little bit of water just around just to give it you know if if the sun like like evaporates the water at least it's gonna feed a little bit of the plant but I'm not gonna water this because it's gonna take a while for that um, the roots to come because th these are um, I think they've been cut for a long time already and there's one and then we have our Echeveria Surion okay so before I even touch it I'm going to spritz it with water just to soften up the roots because it's been it's been it's been through a lot so just softening up the roots and then I'll just spritz just to give it a little bit of moisture and then once that's softened up a little bit I can probably that's pretty these roots are pretty strong and dry But see, there's if you can if you see this, there's there's some roots already forming, like new new ones. <gasps> oh no! I just oof, I just broke one. No, okay. Just I broke two of them. I'm sorry. You have to say you're sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. So I'm just going to make a little space for those roots to go into. I'm holding it up and packing the soil around it while I'm holding it up. I think I already have this. This kind of looks like the one that I have in that big pot that is unidentified um, that I bought from this lady in Elsa Bronte. So we're we have the Surion Surion. Okay, there's two. Put it outside. Then the next trick, my next trick is, again, spritz, just to get some, a little bit of moisture, not a lot. We're not watering it. We're just spritzing a little bit of moisture because it's very, very dry. So my next trick is going to be this guy right here. And again, I'm going to spritz that. And this is the Echeveria Anna Marie. Anna Marie after me. You know what? If you're going to send me Echeverias and say variety or species, you don't give me a name. And it came from a different... A different country I'm going to name it myself 
Okay, I think I just broke that one. Okay, so I'm not going to touch it anymore because I think I'm hurting it more than I'm helping it. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay it on. I just made a little divot just so it has something to sit on. Like the roots have something to, instead of digging around him itself, you know. And I just set it on top just like that and there is my Echeveria Annamarie yes ma'am I'm gonna move some stuff around here so I can have room to put my things move. oh my gosh this one right here is still really wet so I'm gonna put him aside here. Um, where am I gonna put him? I don't. I don't want to get it too close to the rest of them because it might contaminate it with whatever it has from the big box store. Okay. So let the, let get, let move this. Move this here. I'm just repositioning everything so I have enough room. To keep going okay now I want you to move there because I need to get this one again spritz spritz it's the first thing I do even though I didn't do it the first to the first one but just to give it a little bit of moisture because it will want that <clears throat> Okay, the next one I'm going to do is Echeveria. It's Echeveria. Oh, let me spritz it first before I tell you what it is. Echeveria. Tara. After my daughter. Echeveria Tara. Where is she? There we go. Like I said, you're not you're gonna send me Echeverius with no name. I will name it myself. And plop. Gonna pack it in. It's gonna know what to do. And that little bit of moisture will continue to uh, moisten, moisten, moist, <laughs> moisten the, um, the roots and then it will continue to find its way around the soil and, and then hold on to it. I am not going to water this for a while. Even though it has, um, the root, roots already in there, I'm not going to water it for at least 10 days. So I'm going to put um something a reminder for me today is the 14th so the 24th is when i will try to uh what i do is i try to pull it up a little bit and if it's resisting then it means that the the roots have finally held on to the soil if it doesn't then i will continue to just spritz around it like this because I don't want to drown it. I think that's the reason why some of these plants die as soon as you buy them. Because you drown. You know, they say, okay, leave it out for about five days or six days or seven days. I don't. Because I know for a fact that these guys will survive. Number one, they're drought tolerant plants. Number two, they already have water that can sustain them inside of themselves so they will never just all of a sudden you know wilt and die and dry up they these guys are not but just from experience and I did not read this from any books but it does work for me that when I have a brand new plant especially ones with no roots what I do especially a cutting or something I just stick it in after it's healed, I stick it in the soil. I make sure that I spritz around the soil just so it has a little bit of moisture to, to get into, but not enough so that it will rot 
the the stem or the roots not enough um, and but my soil is really dry so you know oh and also there's worm casting in here so the worm casting will continue to feed this plant and continue to feed the roots and that's how it's going to be successful this is what I believe this is my own experience that I'm sharing with you because I know you guys you know you can flail around and not know what to do but um, that's why I'm sharing with you what is successful to me I need to change my battery so I will be back okay so this is my last little tiny one um, then I am going to move on to the bigger plants so pretty these plants especially when they're planted look at this one look at the roots on that one again spritz 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 give it a you know pretty good spritz don't be shy about it you know because it does need a little bit of um, moisture there and plus we have a uh, we have very good drain, fast draining soil here, so, you know, it will never have to be overwatered at all. So I'm just holding it up and then gathering and pushing, back filling around it. Okay. So if I pull it up, see there's no resistance. However, once it gains momentum with the roots, it will start to have resistance there, meaning it's catching on, it's grabbing on. This one is, what do you call this one? This is the Echeveria September. Again species don't work for me i have to have a name <laughs> you know it could be called something else i don't care i don't know this is this it's my garden it's my little botanical garden and it's going to have to be called it's a very september there we go it's pretty yep very pretty okay so i'm gonna move on i don't have to bore you with the rest of uh, what I need to do with the bigger pot because it's the same thing. I'm going to spritz the alcohol on it. Take out the uh, the sticker underneath. Spritz the alcohol in it. Put the mesh in it. Put the mixture, the, the um, soil mixture in it. And then we're done. But we still have one, two, four, five, six to go. Okay, I bought... I bought 10 and they gave me an extra one. What the extra one is, I don't remember. <laughs> um, it probably is one of these unnamed ones, but thank you, K Succulents. I am shouting out K Succulents. Um, the, the, the plants are really hefty and really nice and very healthy. I have not seen one mealybug in any of them. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this purchase. So again, K Succulents, if you guys want to buy um, succulents from them, um, they're online. So it's K as in the K, the letter K, Succulents. And then it's kind of um, kind of um, cumbersome to go through the their... Um, their website because when you try to go back you can't go back but just be patient because we have to be patient these these beautiful plants are our world it's at least my world so i was patient i was looking around i kept going back going back going back i don't care if it took me you know just make sure that you're not run trying to run to go somewhere and do something because um it will be frustrating but again it's a very, very nice plants, uh, very healthy. I've seen other people order from them. 
So, yeah. I think I'm going to do use a small one for this one because it seems like a small plant. I don't know. I just don't want to have to plant it and then a few months from now, you know, I have to repot it again. So I think I'm going to use a big one. Oh, look at there. One just fell off. That's going in there with the others. <laughs> I'm not going to do a separate one for that. Okay, I'll be back, guys. All right, so I have done six pot but i don't know if this one one thing right here this one echeveria seems to be a huge um so i think i'm gonna need a bigger pot for that either that or um put the big one in one pot and then put the rest of them in a different pot so let me start with echeveria rose queen Right here and this one was the one that dropped one of them at first I thought that this was too small for this pot but now that I'm looking at it it is not so So I'm going to spritz some water, spritz the roots to get some moisture, and then I'm going to Ooh, this one is coming off. I'm not very impressed with this one particular plant right here. So I am hoping upon hope that this can stay standing. <laughs> stay standing, please. Stay standing, please. Okay, usually when you pot something, it will kind of die a little bit. You know, I mean, that goes for all, all plants, not just uh, succulents. Actually, succulents are the least um, type of plant that's going to do that but it can, it still may do that don't panic because i've done this so many times before especially when i plant in ground <clears throat> it kind of like wilts a little bit because of the the shock that it gets from being repotted um, but it will bounce back especially if you're giving it all the goodness and the nourishment and the proper light the proper watering and everything when you give it to the plant it will stay or it will bounce back faster than it than it would if you didn't just gonna get all that stuff out of there okay I'm also keeping the little tabs, little labels that they sent me because I'm going to put this in my notebook to index um, my plants. Uh, yeah, so I know even if I get babies and I repot them, I would know like what they are. That's one down and five to go starting to look very pretty like I said before I noticed that most of the echeverias that come from that country Korea um, mostly are red like red tones t red and pink and stuff like that I'm gonna add some more to this make it a little bit higher So 
So I'm going to do the next one is the Vampire Red Ball. This is the prettiest one I feel. And I cannot wait until this right here. It kind of, to me, if it wasn't so smooth and it has um, like the furring, uh, kind of like velvet, it reminds me of the Pulmonata. Echeveria pulvinata. I should be using the, the exact tool that I need, but I kind of forgot it. So you're going to, after you do, after you repot everything, you're going to put it in a place where there's bright light, but not direct sunlight because you don't want it to burn or dry up because right now it's already a little bit dry and I like this this mix that I that I um, came up with because it feels like it also keeps the plants upright so what I'm going to do, because this is kind of like a tree, or a, uh, not a tree, but sort of like a stem. I'm going to add some more just to keep it upright. So it doesn't fall over. Especially right there in the middle. Plus it's pretty too. It makes it look like it's dressed. Hold, I just hold on to it like this so it packs it in some more under there. Oh, cannot forget the tag. A Chiberia Vampire Red Ball. It's so pretty. Ah, here in my mouth <laughs> come on <laughs> make some room there baby thank you okay I'm gonna leave this one for last because that one is a little bit too big for the pot so I have to make a decision some more of this rock I just feel like it wasn't enough mixture there just a little divot Did I already spritz that? No, I haven't. Spritzed it with water. Drop it in. I think the divot is too wide. Drop it in just like that. Packety, packety, pack, pack. 
around. There. Hey, so pretty. Oh, look at that girl. Look at that girl. Uh, which one was that? Whoops. Brave. It's the Echevera Brave. Okay, I'll put you there. So, I see that there is this one little one that escaped from me. So I'm going to take that this pot and put her somewhere where there's a little bit of space right here. So after, uh, like I said, after 10 days, I want to make sure that that this is well established. Um, so I may, like this one, I just may pull it up just a little bit. And if there's resistant, resistance, it means that there's um, roots already forming. And then I can water it very gradually, not like douse it or um, drown it but you know just very carefully just water it a little bit let it you know let it wait another week and then one thing I'd like to point out is that all plants are different so one indication that a plant is uh, losing water or um, struggling is if the plant is starts to pucker up which means that it's kind of crepey and not plump anymore so in that instance you want to water a little bit more not a lot still but a little bit more until their roots are established and then you can um, water it the regular way water it again maybe the second or third time then you can go ahead and water in a, the regular the regular way however before that we have to be really really careful especially these guys are expensive these guys are so expensive i mean when i say expensive it's more expensive than the ones that you the regular echeverries you find locally you know, but if you're a collector, especially if you are a collector of something that's alive, then you have to be very, very cautious about what you do. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Next is uh, Cheveria Paloma. This one. And the Echeveria Paloma is so beautiful. Look at this. It's pale. It looks like a Lowy. I said that before. Uh, squirt, squirt, squirt a little bit to the roots. Even if they say, oh, they don't like wet feet. They don't like wet feet if their feet are wet for days and days and days. But a little bit of squirt of water will not bother them too much Did it. this one has a lot of stem and I'm still holding on to it just hovering above right above it above the soil and then packing it in 
You just spin it around, pack it in, spin it around, pack it in, like that. Not too tight. Because remember, they're still trying to recover from, you know, being cut, being shipped, being left, you know, in the box. I mean, I didn't leave it in the box as soon as I put it outside, you know, put it out on the cardboard. Um, I just let it sit inside my house for a couple of days. This is such a very important. And it's inside my house, not outside. Now, these um, pots are heavy only because there's rocks in them incorporated. So you have to kind of remember, you know, what's, what's in them. Because you might think, oh, it's too much water. Because I, this is the first time I'm doing this. So every other planter I have out there has um, regular soil, which is very light, but not that I have all these. Um, and it helps to, to, to make it heavy because, you know, it's not prone to being tur um, turned over by or knocked over by the wind which we seem to be having a lot of lately. This is the Aga Colorata. No. This is the Echeveria Colorata FMA brand tea. Brandy. Brandy. I don't know what that means, but okay, but this one has this I'm still not. Yeah, I you know, I just leave it. Just leave it. it doesn't hurt it anyway so just gonna kind of move it straight let that let's straighten out for a little bit see what I'm doing I'm just trying to coax it to straighten up this one I'm a little bit concerned because maybe not I don't know like the stem seems to be damaged like there's kind of like a I don't know. I hope not. I can do it. Let me just push it down a little bit right there. And then I mean, I probably and being way too careful with it. But I'd rather be careful, err on the side of care, being careful than, um, you know, risking, risking the health of it. So this is the colorata. I know I say it like that. I don't know why. <laughs> why do I say it like that? Okay, oh, ooh, that's heavy. Oh. Okay, so the last but not least is this Agavoid species. Um, what can I do with this one? I think, I'm trying to think, should I just leave it? I should just leave it the way it is and just let it recover. Because it's pushing, I mean, look at all these beautiful pups. Look at that beautiful pups. And this is, this is a, a different agavoid. There's a lot of agavoids internationally, I believe. Um, 
even in San Francisco. Why that is, I have no clue. So I'm just going to coax the roots a little bit because obviously this was this was laid flat. That's why the the roots are flat. Um laying flat like this and dried up. So I'm going to coax it. You know, let the water do its thing. Yeah, see it's it is getting softer. But I'm trying not to hurt it at all. So I just want to kind of straighten it out so that it would go straight down the soil. I mean, that just makes sense, doesn't it? See, and it's already cooperating with me. I love that. I love that it's cooperating. That's way, that see, the roots are just way too dry. So I'm going to coax it straight up straight down see simple as that okay now is it gonna fit my it's gonna fit if it if only it was just that one so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and plant it in here anyway because what i can do later on once it's established oh this one right here actually has roots so once it's once it is established then instead of transferring it to a new pot I can just harvest the babies and put it in different pots in a smaller one capiche capiche okay see see how easy the roots are now There we go. Perfect. So this is this is acting like okay. I've been here in this pot for a while now, and I just pushed all these babies out. Now you can take my babies and repot them if you want. Ah, oh, so beautiful. And that's it, guys. This is the whole shebang i'm going to take a picture so you guys can see all of them together um this one took me a couple hours at least to plant and i'm really hungry now it's dinner time and i'm really hungry so i have all these papers that i'm going to put away because i'm gonna stick this in my notebook so i have um a library of or um, reference point to you know to maybe make notes and stuff like that like how how it's growing and what it needs and how it was acting in different place different areas of the of the the garden oh that is so pretty I mean seriously okay guys thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon I'm going to do another haul to this one nursery I got um, a gift certificate from my son-in-law and I'm going to this local nursery down the street where we've been before me and you and I'm um, going to see what they have for plants. And maybe I can get one big plant. It's a $30 gift certificate. So maybe one big plant or two really good ones that I don't have. And as soon as I get babies from these guys, I will definitely, you know, clue you in on if it when it's going to be available for you guys to purchase if you want to purchase them okay guys thank you all for stopping by
please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you. XOXO.